Hey homeschool friends. So short of designing my own science curriculum, which honestly I'm still thinking about doing, so stay tuned to the end to hear a little bit more about that. But in lieu of that, I have been using the Sunlight Science curriculum and it has been a really good fit for our family for multiple different reasons and that is what this video is going to be about today. So for those of you that are new to this channel and don't know, I do have my PhD in microbiology. So I love science. I have always loved science. I think it is fascinating. I am also a Christian, so I love viewing science and nature through that lens. But I'm sure you can imagine that it is rather hard to find a homeschool curriculum that kind of serves both of those needs for me. The ability to see modern science as just beautiful and amazing, as well as see it through the lens of God. But in this video in particular, I'm going to be walking through sunlight science. And in order to do a good job of this, I want to do two things. So first I'm going to do a bit of a flip through. We're going to look through the instructor's guide, all the different resources, all the different books, all the different stuff for experiments, the kit, the experiment guide, things like that. I'm going to take you through all the resources and just show it to you. And then I'm going to go through my thoughts and feelings about it. Because as a scientist, I have kind of a high bar for science. But we're also talking some younger years. So I'm going to be sharing the Sunlight Science A and I'm using it with my six and a half year old first grader and my seven, almost eight year old second grader. So just to give some context there. But otherwise, I need to stop talking. Let's just get into the video. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel if you are new here or welcome back if you have been coming for a while. So like I said, this is a flip through as well as a review of sunlight science. So let me just flip the camera around and get into it. So I flipped the camera around and now I wanna take you through the program. This is so exciting. I really, really love this program. So I'm not sure if I mentioned this already, but we are using the Sunlight Science A program, the light and sound waves, biological features, space science and engineering design for this year. So that's what the cover looks like. And then it comes with some introduction pages, including some important information on evolution in the age of the earth, which I will talk about in just a little bit as I chat through my thoughts and feelings on the program, because that makes a difference for my thoughts and feelings. So I'll get into that in just a second. But it has like some practical information there at the beginning, and then it gets more into the instructor's guide, which is right here. Zoomed in a little bit more so you could see it. I just actually have it flipped open to the week we are currently using, and that is week 16 listed up here. And I personally picked up the five day program because I just love science. And so I didn't want to miss any of the books or any of the content. And so you can see up here, it has the days listed across the top and then it has the books listed down the side and really up top is where the books are. And then here is where the discover and do first grade science experiments are listed. And that's always on that fourth day. So this works out really well for us. So basically you're able to read some of the books. And in this case, it starts with the children's encyclopedia book that has the QR codes, which my kids love. So we watch a small video every day and then in this case, we're also reading the Magic School Bus Inside the Human Body book. So those are the two books we're using this week. And then it says that we have activity questions, which I don't have mine pulled out for this week, but the, here's what some of those look like. They're in color. It's pretty easy to use. I actually do these verbally with my two kids. We just talk about them and I circle stuff and I have them kind of rotate who's answering what. We just do a better job when we work as a team. So those are the activity questions. And then you can see actually you need help with the answers, which I have yet to need help with the answers, but they have the answer keys right behind your page of instructions. So what I also want to point out with this, so say you're reading something on day 76 here, you go down into the teacher's notes, which I think this right here is some of the most valuable parts of sunlight is it pulls out some information that might be either not totally correct or not well explained in say the Usborne encyclopedia. And so it'll talk a little bit more about that. Like this one, it was talking about the average amount of human blood there is in the body. It only says there's about nine pints of blood, but that's not true if you're talking newborns versus adults and when do children start to have the same amount as adults. So it kind of gets into a little bit more in case your kids are more curious, which is just great. And then it goes on to day 77 here and in the Usborne book, we're actually talking more about organs and the skeletal system. And so here it talks about Psalm 139. So it, it brings in the verse that talks about God knitting us together in our mother's womb. And it's just a beautiful verse. And then to tie that in to the pictures and 
what we are learning about the science is just, that's perfect for me. I just really, really like that. And so a lot of times I just keep my working binder, which is what this is. So this isn't all of the weeks. I actually only have week 16 through 23 in my binder here. And then I keep my big sunlight binder on the shelf and I just rotate it out. And so that's how this part of the instructor's guide is set up. And then, like I said, the discover and do science is always on the fourth day and it tells you which science project you're doing. In this case, it says number 16. And so you would pull out your experiment book. And this is a really big book, but it's really interesting. I can go to experiment 16 and the title is, how can I keep something warm when it's cold outside? And so it talks about some key concepts. It talks about materials. And what's nice here, let me pull you back to the instructor's guide, is it has this section here of supplies and a planning list. So this is the supplies for this week. And it tells you what they provide in the kit. And then it says what you need to provide from home. And I'll show you the kit in just a second. But it's nice that they say what they give you. And then here's the same thing. It wants to make you aware of what maybe you need to pick up during your weekly grocery trip or thing, something like that. So if you need to pick up something, it gives you a little bit of time to plan that ahead. So I really like that. And so this instructor's guide does not explain the experiments. The experiments are 100% in this big experiment book. And it goes through the materials, introduction, things that you're discussing with your kids and having them brainstorm a bit ahead of time. And then it gets into investigate. And so it's like identifying the problem. And it talks a little bit about penguins here. So it gives you some extra stuff and you're designing and creating a solution and you're testing it out and then you're retesting it out and then you're drawing conclusions. So they're always set up like this and I, th I think it's very age appropriate. I think some of the topics have been a little bit above my kids' heads, but it's not anything that I can't handle. And so we really like that. And then on top of this experiment book is this Discover and Do Science. So these are the paper packets. So this is what you're using with your kids for the experiments. So here is for 16. And so this is where they're writing it down. So they're identifying their problem. They're kind of taking notes about how to keep the eggs warm and what was your design idea. And then here's the back where you draw a picture of what your design looks like. They really love the draw a picture thing. And then like, how did it work? Did it stay warm for 20 minutes? Yes or no? And then did you need to improve it? And how did you improve it? I really like the way these are set up in such thoughtful ways, or at least in the way that it makes your kids think. I guess it's a better way to put it. So those are the sheets you're doing during your experiment time. And let me show you the kit really quick. So here's the kit. And you can see it just comes with all of the different things that you will possibly need. Like there's to me, maybe you don't have latex gloves or you don't have a styrofoam ball at this size. And that's just really nice. And then you don't have like plastic tubing or even masking tape. So it just gives you so many little things that you're going to need. That's really nice that you don't have to buy a big bag of stoppers or a big bag of like these little cups. So it's fantastic. So yes, you can definitely collect this stuff yourself. You don't have to buy their kits. It's not a requirement. I just think it's well worth the money. You would honestly probably spend more if you tried to source it yourself and you would definitely spend a lot more time, which I don't want to spend time on it. So I've really appreciated having the kit. What I want to show you last is my most exciting part of this program. And that's all the books, right? Look at all these books. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I already showed you this one. So the children's encyclopedia with all of the QR codes. And I feel like the amount of information per spread, which they always pretty much have you read two pages. It's just the right amount of information per day. So I really like that. Another book that they have in this year is a lift the flap engineering book, which is just great. It really ties into how they run their science experiments. It's just thinking about being more of an engineer and their dad's an engineer. So for us, this is even a cooler aspect of the program. So that's the engineer book. And this one you get if you do the day five program instead of the day four. And we have really enjoyed it. We've actually already finished this. It's hooray for inventors. And albeit it is somewhat a busy book, I felt like my kids really enjoyed hearing the backstory of some of these inventors, the backstory of how they got started and how tenacious they were and how they just kept pushing for their designs and their ideas. It was just really inspirational. Then there's a few of these let's read and find out level two. So this one's light is all around us. We often get these from the library. So we already like these kinds of books. So that one's light is all around us. And the next one is sound is all around us. And then there's two magic school buses so inside the human body, as well as lost in the solar system. 
And then there's a few of these Usborne starting point science books. And so these are really small, but again, they have a similar feel to the Usborne books. So what makes you ill? So again, it's just a two page spread where you can kind of pull out little, little bits of information here or there. And so this is what makes you ill. And this is what do people eat? And it's the same idea, we could talk about food. So I'm really excited about this. My kids are always really interested in nutrition and things like that. And then we have read this and I've talked about this in a number of my homeschool update videos. I love this book. So this is Pasteur's Fight Against Microbes. Like I said, I'm a microbiologist. And so we really enjoyed this story. It was just a story about how he solved this problem of something growing in the sugar beet juice, I believe it was. It was so fascinating. My kids were sad when we were done reading this book. They're like, what? We don't get to read about Pasteur anymore? And I was like, no, but I really love that you loved hearing about it. So they loved this book. So being able to draw it to a famous scientist was just so much fun. And I believe Sunlight highlights a famous scientist every year in their science programs. So those are the books, which is my favorite part of the Sunlight curriculum. So. Anyway, that is the lesson I wanted to show you in the program. And now I want to flip you around and tell you my thoughts on the program. I have so many different things to share with you. So let's get into that. So those are the resources. I hope that was helpful to kind of take a look at it. And personally, I feel like that is just an exciting set of resources. I just love all the books. I love how the instructor's guide is laid out, all of the things. So I love all that. But now I want to talk a little bit about my thoughts, more of the review section of this video. So honestly, what drew me to the sunlight science program instead of say like the book shark program which is pretty much all the same books except it's more of a secular version is i liked to be able to bring god into it bring my faith into the science and i feel like sunlight does an excellent job of allowing for that and what i mean by that is so in the instructor's guide at the beginning of it there are a number of different pages that have a lot of information about the program a lot of like how to instruction as well as book lists and stuff but more importantly it contains this page okay and i know that's a little bit hard to see but it says evolution and the age of the earth so on this page in particular sunlight lays out not its stance on some of those things but just the issue and i liked this because what they're acknowledging is that there is some tension first off between mainstream secular science and Christianity, but also that there is a spectrum within Christianity of how people fall out on some of these issues. It goes a lot into explaining a bit more about macroevolution, microevolution, as well as different types of people. So people who have more of a naturalism worldview, and that is the viewpoint that denies the existence of anything beyond the natural world. That's why where naturalism comes in. I learned a lot about this in a book called, oh, Science and Faith, I believe. I'll put a link to it down below. It's a really big book, but it's an excellent book where it talks a lot about some of these worldviews. So that's a naturalist worldview, but then there's also the theism or theistic viewpoint. And, and in this case, there can be a few different groups there. You can have people who are called more theistic evolutionists, and those are people who believe in evolution, but they believe that God derives the process. And then they hold the term Christian theists. And these are people who do not believe in macroevolution or theistic evolution. And they believe that God made all life without the use of macroevolution. Anyway, sorry to deep dive on that. But what I liked about that is, so they present these ideas and then they say, okay, you have to teach your kids. And this says that some of the resources they use will mention evolution. Some of them will mention millions of years. And what I like about sunlight is it gives the freedom to tackle that as a family. It includes it in all of those instructor guide notes that I showed you earlier. It talks about, hey, this book brings up this. You could say it this way or this way, but it gives that freedom to not assume that you fall in one camp or the other within that Christian scope, because this is very much a Christian curriculum. It is not secular, it is Christian. But within that Christian scope, they acknowledge that there are different groupings of people. So all that to say, sorry if I took a while to say that, I fall under more of that theistic evolutionary perspective. And I talked a lot about this in that other video that I linked. So please go see that if you want more information about kind of where I land. But the fact that Sunlight acknowledges all of that allows me to easily use their program. That I don't have to be doing a lot of omitting or editing as I go to take out things that I don't believe totally to be true. All that being said, I 
have found a comfort in feeling like I kind of have a place with this curriculum because I just don't feel like there are a lot of curriculums out there that take that viewpoint of being both a scientist and a Christian. Because the second thing I wanted to talk about, my thoughts on the program is the science. So as a scientist, what do I think of the science in the sunlight program? I think it's really good. I think these younger years are great for establishing wonder in the natural world, for exposing the kids to lots of different things and have them just form an excitement for science. And I think sunlight does that really well. And I think the use of books really helps that. But what I really love is the science experiments. And even though I'm the first one to admit, I don't do all of them. My life can be a little crazy and chaotic. So don't hear that I'm doing all of this stuff perfectly. I don't always do the experiments, but the ones we have done, I have seen a lot of value in. I've seen a lot of value in the fact that they are designed to encourage critical thinking. And that just sounds like such a broad statement, but it's so true. With their experiments, they're asking the kids to be like, hey, put on your engineer cap or put on your scientist cap because here is a problem in the world and you are gonna come up with some ways to solve it. And so it asks kids to kind of get involved in science. It's not just like, here, plant a bean in some soil and see that it grows. That's all good stuff. That's good observational scientific experiments. But the experiments I really like are the ones where they are investigating something. Well, they are asked to troubleshoot, to come up with an initial design. Like what materials would you use in this situation? I love that. I think it is so fun. They really like that. It really boosts their confidence and the fact that they're like, I can do this. It's so cool. And on top of that, they just recently switched over a lot of their science programs, especially these earlier ones. I think they did A, B, and C this past year for the fall 2021 people. And so I have their new science and they have switched around all their experiments and things like that. And what's important to me is they use some standards. So they use the next generation science standards, I think it is, and GSS. And that's great because I just want the assurance that my kids are following something with a game plan or a end goal in mind. So there are standards involved in what they chose to teach the kids in their science programs. So I love that. That's fantastic. So those are my two big thoughts about Sunlight Science since we have been using it. I really like it. We're gonna continue using it unless I start designing my own. Because personally speaking, I think my ideal science curriculum would have more of that theistic evolution, old earth perspective, science lens, if you will. But since there really is no science program like that for the elementary years, the only science program like that is called Novair Science, but it doesn't start until grade seven, and it's more of a middle school, high school program. So there's nothing for the elementary years. So honestly, like I've been hinting at, I am seriously tossing around the idea of writing my own elementary science programs that have those perspectives that are very much science driven, but have some of that awe and wonder in God's creation kind of woven through. I'm not sure if I'm gonna fully take this on, but I'm really hoping to do it for my kids. And I don't know if it'll go beyond my kids, if I will make it more of something I share with all of you or not. Honestly, I don't know if that many people are interested. I feel like I'm a very much in a minority when it comes to belief systems like this. So I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear if you at all are interested in something like that. And it's okay if you're not. I, I know a lot of you follow me are either secular or hold more of a young earth perspective. That's totally fine. I just, I'm curious. So comment down below. I would love to hear from you all. I love this conversation. I feel like there's a lot of tension around it and it doesn't need to be. I think it can be something we can all grow and learn and all of that stuff. But I just wanted to mention that really quickly at the end of my Sunlight Science review here because it's just on my heart and it's where I'm at. So I would love to hear from all of you. Otherwise, that's what I have for this flip through review video of Sunlight Science. I hope it was helpful. Please let me know if it was. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, all those things if you found it useful. Otherwise, I will see you in the next homeschool video. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. Okay.